Hey everybody and welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at lighting in general. Now in the previous videos for the course of V-Ray lighting for architectural visualization, we saw how to use all different, uh, all the types of different lighting in different scenarios. And we took a look at the technical specs, how to set everything up in 3ds Max. So what we're going to try to do in this video is showcase all the different scenarios and how to use or where to use all of those types of lighting that you learned in the previous video. So without much further ado, let's jump straight in. One extra thing I would like to note is that lighting has a dual use. The first one or the primary one is to illuminate your scene, but the second one also plays a major role and that one is to play with your emotions. So depending on what you're trying to get in your scene, you should always try to get the light to play a role in setting the mood for your scene. The first type of lighting that we're going to take a look is going to be the natural light or the daylight. Now this type of lighting is the most common one because we are all accustomed at seeing it everywhere. It's a type of lighting that is really broadband because it has a plethora of colors in it and it depends on a lot of different things it will depend on what sort of weather we have outside what time of day it is what season it is is it warm or is it cold outside also another thing that you can do is you can control how much light goes into your room based on the size of your windows so for example if you have bigger windows placed higher in your scene, they will let in more light into your entire scene. Also, what you can do here as an extra step of re realism, you can try to find some information as to the place that you are creating or you're trying to recreate. Is it facing the north side or is it facing the south side? For example, if it's facing the north side, the light that is going to be coming inside that room is going to be cooler while if it's going to be facing the southern side, the light coming inside your room is going to be much warmer. When lighting your interior scenes, rather than relying on a one-size-fits-all approach, the recommended way to light a scene is by utilizing different types of fixtures, each fulfilling a distinct function. Considering how an area is used as well as its size and design style will help determine what works best at what scene. There are three basic types of lighting. Ambient, task and accent lights. Layered throughout a room, especially a multi-purpose ones, they work together to achieve a rich and flexible lighting design. The first type of lighting is going to be the ambient lighting. This sort of lighting provides an overall illumination and is meant to create a general and uniform lighting throughout your level. It is the first layer of lighting and it sets the tone of the space. That's why it's typically soft or diffuse and often it can be dimmable to accommodate for day and nighttime settings. Ambient lighting is especially important in hallways and stairs for optimal orientation and visibility. It is also useful in kitchens or home offices, where fixtures with wide light beams provide a consistent level of lighting. There are several types of ambient lighting. Ceiling mounted or recessed fixtures that direct light towards your item or your room wall sconces and floor lamps which wash the walls and the ceilings with light. You have cove lighting which is a uh, hidden light, floor lamps, pendants, bounce uh, light off ceilings and walls. Although it provides general illumination, ambient light is not ideal for task work or to showcase a specific element. That is why it's called ambient light. It's only supposed to help you with setting up the ambient of the room. If you want to showcase something or a particular item, that is what we're going to use the next two types of lighting. 
Next up, we're going to take a look at task lighting. This is direct intense illumination and it is ideal for detailed task work such as reading or writing at a desk, grooming and preparing food. It is focused on the particular area where the task is performed and is brighter than ambient lighting. Effective task lighting is glare free and strong enough to prevent eye strain. Examples of this sort of light would be recessed and track lighting, pendants, under cabinet lightings, floor, desk and table lamps, bathroom vanity lights. So task lighting is key in the kitchen where under cabinet lighting or pendants increase visibility on countertops and food preparation areas. Table and floor lamps provide useful task lighting in living areas and bedrooms and can reinforce the room's desired style. The third and last type is the accent lighting. This sort of lighting is intended to highlight a specific object or area. Accent lights are typically three times as bright as ambient lights. Accent lighting draws attention to a feature, such as an artwork, furnishing or architectural details, converting them into focal points of your area. Adjustable fitting are preferred for this type of lighting as they allow precision focusing on small areas or objects. Common accent lights include wall lights, recessed spotlighting, wall mounted picture lights and track lighting. Excess lighting differs from the other types of lighting in that its primary objective is aesthetics. It's creating a point of interest for the viewers. It adds style and drama to a space and is especially suited to living and garden areas, entrances and anywhere the goal is to display special features of the room. Recessed ceiling lights, track lighting or wall mounted luminates are very effective in living or common areas, as they can be angled and directed to create a highlight. So if we take into account all the things that we just noted, we can take what we learned and not only use it in the interiors, but we can use it in lighting exteriors as well. For example, we can light a de deck or step lights as they are installed directly into the yard's hardscape or decking. They're used as an accent light to architectural details and added safety to dark stairs, so they have a dual purpose. They can also be used for washing lights down stone walls or lighting up entertainment spaces. Also, while we are on the topic of lighting exteriors, we can play with another idea, and that is the idea of going ahead and introducing a little bit of chaos in your lighting. What I mean by this is, if your landscape will allow you to go ahead and scatter your lights in an irregular pattern, that can make your exterior light up and make it more interesting to the common viewer. And while we're still at the topic of lighting the exterior, we might as well take a look at the idea of lighting the way. By doing this, you're basically following the same logic as airports have for the runways, where they have a lot of lights to help land the plane, which is signalizing and telling them that that is the important place for the plane to land. Well, by doing this, you're doing is exactly the same thing with your render or your house. You can use this sort of a lighting to accentize certain areas, gathering spots, or simply put a walkway down to your entryway to the house. Next one up, we're going to take a look at uplighting. What uplighting is, is basically putting in lights at the bottom of your walls. This is mainly done for exteriors, but it does have some utilization for interiors as well. One of its main strong points is that by utilizing this sort of lighting, 
on your walls for the exterior. If you have any sort of a irregularity on the wall texture, this is going to emphasize it and make it pop out. So instead of having just a regular paint or wood, you can have a much more interesting borderline artistic look to your render or your house. So now we're going to take a look at something that's going to be contrary to what we saw so far. Namely, instead of having three types of lighting that is going to help us get the entire scene lit up well, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to do the totally opposite thing and make it so that our lighting has a stark contrast. Contrast is the ratio between the whites and the blacks, or in other words, the light and the dark parts of your scene. So high contrast versus low contrast means that your high contrast images or your renders will have a full range of tones from bright highlights to dark shadows, uh, while the low contrast renders will have a much smaller, shallower range of tones. So. What we can do here is when we are lighting our exteriors, we can have a certain area which is going to be well lit, while the secondary areas are going to be less lit. That way we can emphasize which part of the house or the building are important and basically make it so that the viewer is focusing his attention to that area. And also, this works really, really well on night shots, because when it's nighttime, it's going to be dark outside, so that will create that stark contrast between the dark coming from the environment and the light coming from your artificial lighting. The next concept is gonna be to use bold statements with your lighting. And what I mean by this is don't be afraid to use lights that might uh, look extravagant. Either they're too fancy or they're too modern. Don't be afraid to use them in your scene as they can give you some great results. And also, if you go down this road, don't be afraid to use multiple of these lights in one place as that way you're only going to reinforce your statement. Another concept I would like you to think about is to break away from the standard way of thinking. This means a wall or a ceiling doesn't always have to be flat. You can use lights that are recessed or hidden behind a wall that has organic or irregular shape. And the great thing about this is that if you do something like this, your work will attract attention and with that you can further sell whatever you've made inside that area. Hope you guys had fun and managed to learn something new. If you enjoyed the video then go ahead and check out the V-Ray Lighting for Architectural Visualization course where you will learn the technical aspects in setting up these sorts of lights in 3ds Max and V-Ray. If you would like to support me, you can click the join button and the direct links will be in the description below. And the most helpful thing you can do is click the like and subscribe button and comment below in the video. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.